Hey, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I hope y'all have had a great day. I've had a great day. If you are on Facebook, please take a second to say hello. Give us a few hearts, a few likes. If you're a member, please do me a favor and hit the share button. The share button really helps us out. Y'all may not know how much the share button does help us out. So just hit share. You don't even have to say anything. Let somebody go, what's this that they're sharing? Um, so just let us know. Um, Let's know that you love us by hitting the share button. That's helpful. That's helpful. And say hello if you don't mind. Okay, if you are in the Zoom room, which I see 11 of you here in the Zoom room, please set your chat to everyone and then take just a second to say hello. Let me know if you had a perfect day today. Um, on Facebook, let me know if you had a perfect day today as well. Let's see, who's here? Jeannie, hey Jeannie. Um, we got a lot of awesome people over here in the Zoom room with us. A lot of people who are, well, I see somebody on here who is very dedicated to a friend, and I really like that. Thank you, Sherry, for being on here with your friend, Vicki. I absolutely love it when somebody says, hey, come on, do this with me. So, hey, Jane, glad that you're here. Welcome. Hey, Teresa. Angelina and Leisha. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of perfect days here. Hey, Vicki. Um, hey, Elena. I'm glad y'all are here. Awesome. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started. Tonight is a very fun night. We are going to be going over the recipe library and how to create a grocery list, add foods to the groceries. Hey, Landra. Landra is on here too. Hey, Landra. I saw your name on something the other day, Landra, and I wanted to know that I, I, I pictured your face on from our meetings that we had at, at the beginning of this. Hey, Jan. Um, awesome, Jeannie. Wonderful. Thank you. That is awesome. Okay. So we're going to go over the recipe library, how to add recipes to the grocery list, how to add foods to the grocery list, and how to create the grocery list. And then we're going to check out that grocery list. Okay. So awesome, Michelle. I'm glad you are listening. She's listening in the car as she is driving around. So I'm going to share my screen. We're going to the fast track laps. And just as a reminder, if you don't know where to find the Fast Track Labs, you just click Dashboard at the top and the Fast Track Labs will appear. Now, if you've been a member for a while, your instructor page is going to show up first. And then you just click right over here to the left on Fast Track. But if you're brand new, it should be showing up to Fast Track as soon as you hit Dashboard, okay? should be showing up there. All right, so the very first thing that we're going to do tonight is just remind everybody that this is set up so that you can, in an organized way, methodically work through each little step to create a framework of knowledge to work with, okay? So all you have to do is simply hover your mouse over the task, the black box pops up. That black box is basically the instructions for your homework. Nobody likes to be given homework and they don't know what to do with it. So there's your instructions. That little black box is different for every single task. And this little uh, video right over here is just a shortened version of what we're gonna do tonight. So that just kind of goes through that in a shortened way. All right, so the very first thing we are going to do is we're gonna create a grocery list. In order to add foods to a grocery list, the grocery list must be created first. If you shop at multiple stores, this is a good time to create a grocery list for each store. So let's say that you go to Publix, Kroger, England, Ingalls, Walmart, you go to all of them, just go ahead and create them all right there in, the, in their uh, grocery list. So I'm clicking on that link. This link is actually taking me to a spot in this green tab. Once you are no longer in Fast Track, you're just going to access the grocery lists from this green tab. Okay, but here we are. And you're just going to click Add Grocery List. So let's just click Add Grocery List. We pick the date. I'm just going to use today. And let's just say we're going to do angles. And then I'm going to cre create. 
That's all I needed you to do was create a grocery list. And if you want to create multiple ones, you just do those same little clicks and you get that done. All right, so let's go back over here. And as soon as you've done that, you check the box. How easy was that? Now we're going to add some food items from the food library to the grocery list. So for practice, what I want you to do when we're off of this video is to pick some few food items from the food library and add them to one of your grocery lists. Adding a food item into the grocery list can be done from two places. In the food list, it's the last button to the right of the food item listing. And then once you've opened the food item, it's the green button that looks like a list. Okay, so we're clicking here. It's going to take us to the food library. And we went over this last night. So y'all, y'all know all about this. But what I want to do is I want to take the first three food items that I see y'all put out here for us to find, at least look at that particular item and then add it to the grocery list. So I'm going to let y'all put some ideas in there and I'm getting the water. Okay. So three food items that might be on your list of, I'm curious, I'm curious about this food item, which category does it fall into? Y'all have to have some ideas. Anybody? All right. Well, I will pick some myself. I will pick some. So let's say that I am curious about what um, grits are. Maybe you eat grits each morning and you're like, wait, am I going to be able to have my grits? Okay. Okay. I've got three now. I've got pepperoni. I'm going to do grits. We got Brussels sprouts. Okay. So grits. So I just put in the word grits and then I get egg whites and grits, which is actually a perfect pairing y'all because it does not follow the rules, but it's been determined that if you do it the right way, that it will, it'll work out. Okay. So there's just egg whites and grits. Let's read it. I'm just curious. So this is a perfect pairing, but it is a zero on the weight loss meter. So it's one single serve packet of or a quarter cup of cooked grits with half to one cup of egg whites. So if you were to do that, that's a good one, Deb. That's a good one. And then it gives you a list right here um, of how to specifically do that. So if you wanted to eat some grits, you would need to come in here and read this description and make sure that you're doing it right. Okay, so Let's go ahead and just go back. I just wanted to show you that. That's a perfect pairing, meaning it does not follow the rules, but if done the exact way in the description, then it will work. Okay, so we've got the great value instant grits, any flavor, grits in general, and then Quaker instant grits, any, any flavor. I'm going to click on that one. And if I just, if look, it's an energy carb. Ding, 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 ding. What must you do with this one? You must have it with a lean protein and a fibrous carb. So that is an energy carb. So if you like these little instant grits, you need to know they need to go with an energy carb and, excuse me, they are an energy carb and need to go with a lean protein and a fibrous carb, or you could have one packet of these with half a cup to one cup of egg whites and it would work. That's still a zero on the weight loss meter. But I'm gonna add it to the grocery list just to show you how to add it to the grocery list. So I add it from the grocery list right there. Okay, so now I'm gonna look up oatmeal. Oops, if I can spell it right. So oatmeal, everything that comes up with the word oatmeal in it is going to be in here. Now you're going to notice that there's a lot of zeros on the weight loss meter because they aren't necessarily, oatmeal isn't necessarily the greatest thing, but HealthWise oatmeal was designed specifically for weight loss. That's why it has a negative three. It's a very high protein product. 
but most people are just talking about regular oatmeal. So let's just click on oatmeal. Oatmeal is a category three energy carb. And if you do just a little bit of it, you could use it as a condiment. So you can have one instant packet, but ding, 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 that's an energy carb. It must be eaten with a lean protein and a fibrous carb, or you can have a quarter cup of regular oatmeal. And then you come down here and I'm not going to read all of that, but you can read all of that if oatmeal is your thing. If oatmeal is your thing though, and you want to lose weight, I wouldn't do it, but just a couple of times a week myself, just because it's really not that great for weight loss. Um, and may, see, see, there is going to be a season where you go, okay, you know what? I want the results that I can get if I'm really paying close attention um, to what's available. I'm willing to give up that oatmeal for a minute. Let me get my results. And then I can add my oatmeal back in, in, in maintenance. Okay. That, you know, you have to think about what things like that sometimes. I'm going to click on, I want to look at this Quaker fiber and protein instant oatmeal though, because I want you to see this is a two and a three. Ooh, ding, 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 it's got three and it's already got some two properties in it. What else must you have with this one? See, regular oatmeal is just a three, but the way that they've made this one, they've added some additional fiber. So this one's a two and three. What must you have with it? What category? Because two and three by itself is not an approved combo. What category must you put with this two and three? Yes, Vicki, a lean protein. It could be as simple as just making some egg whites, or it could be a, a cup of Kroger Carb Master or Fat-Free Fair Life. It could be as simple as that. And Lynn Eldon says that she eats hers with egg whites. Michelle is saying to add a lean protein. Yes, you got to add a lean protein. Deb says the a cup of Carb Master milk. Yes. So you can do those things. And if we want to add this to our grocery list, we just click the button and click add. All right, so let's look up Brussels. I'm just going to put in Brussels. And Brussels sprouts right there. And see, it's going to list out anything that's got Brussels sprouts in it. And sometimes these are just frozen, frozen uh, Brussels sprouts and such. Let's click regular Brussels sprouts. They are a negative three on the weight loss meter. They are a category two fibrous carb. They can be used as a freebie. Now remember freebies are used in like a moment of mental weakness where you're ready to give up. You don't just add freebies to meals because you call like if you're gonna have fibrous carbs in a meal, you call it a fibrous carb. You don't call it a freebie. A freebie is how you're using it, not with a combined meal. So you can have a half a cup's really what you wanna be at in weight loss mode, okay? Um, I'm going to go back though, because let's just say that you know you like Brussels sprouts. You don't really need to open up the listing of it. You can just click this button right here and it would add it to the grocery list. All right, so let's look up pepperoni. Pepperoni. Okay, so there's a lot of things with pepperoni in it. So there's armor turkey pepperoni, there's boar's head turkey pepperoni, this one's very good. Um, Hormel turkey pepperoni, and so there's more. There's lots of things with the word pepperoni in it. So I'm just gonna add the pepperoni, the boar's head right from that list, and there we go. So now I'm gonna look up, look up turkey sausage. Turkey sausage. Okay, so here's all the things that have the words turkey sausage in there. So there's a lot of options. At this point, I would want to narrow my list down just a little bit. And so what I would do is I would take it down to negative 
negative one, negative three. The only reason I'm doing that is because sausage tends to be a protein plus fat a lot of times. And so if I took it down too low, I wouldn't have as um, nice a list. Okay, so I took it down to negative one, negative three. At least I cut out the zeros, not gonna help you, not gonna hurt you and the above. And of course we recognize that Jimmy Dean name. And I like to buy these Jimmy Dean cooked turkey, turkey sausage crumbles and so forth. So you could just kind of look through there. There's Jenny O turkey sausage. And let's just say that you wanted to add that to the grocery list. You could do that. But while we're here, let's just see what that looks like. It's category four protein plus fat. And there's what it looks like. Looks like your traditional um, sausage that you would cut and cook up and do two to six ounces. And you would want to have this with a category two uh, for sure. But you could also have a one with it. That would not be a problem. Okay, so now we're going to head back over to Fast Track because now we've added a few items to the food uh, from the food library to a grocery list. And now you see how that does. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to familiarize ourselves with the recipe library. Well, while we are familiarizing ourselves with the recipe library, we're just going to go ahead and do this fourth task on here, which is add recipes to the grocery list. We're just going to do all that together while we're in there. And let's see, Michelle says the sausage balls out of the crumbles are amazing. Yeah, I can. I need. you know what? I probably have all the ingredients to make that, Michelle. I should do it. I keep those little turkey sausage uh, crumbles in my house because I can easily just make myself a two egg omelet, those little turkey crumbles and put a slice of cheese in there and be happy with that meal. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner, I, I can be happy with that meal. So, so let's just kind of read this over. This is so cool. When you add uh, the recipes to the grocery list. Each recipe required ingredient can be added to the grocery list with the click of a button. Once you open the recipe, then you'll click that green add to grocery list button. So when you're in the food library, you can access the add to grocery list button from the end of the listing or once you've opened it. But in the recipe library, you can only add it to the grocery list once you've opened it, okay? So just a little nuance there. All right, so now though, we're gonna familiarize ourselves with the recipe library. We're gonna search the recipe library for your favorites. This is a database built by our Shibboleth family. As you are exploring, please heart each recipe you think you might like to try. Did you hear that? that you think you might like to try. Hey, Dawn, glad you're here. Um, harding the recipe adds it to your personal favorites, which can be found in your My Journal tab up here, or it can be found in the My Favorites tab in the recipe library. But harding in the recipe library is very important. Very, very important. Let's say that you see a recipe that you think you might like to make and you think, I'll remember the name of it. You won't. So go ahead and click the heart, okay? And it moves it and it just makes it easier to remember that, okay? So that's just my tip. Once you make that recipe, if you end up not liking it, you just unheart it and it will come back out. But really that heart is not saying, oh, it's a favorite. It's saying, I think I might want to try this or it could possibly be a favorite. Okay, so here we are in the recipe library and I want to go over the way that this is laid out for you. So the very first thing that you come to and see are these pictures. These pictures change. Every time you come to this page, these pictures change. That they're, they're dynamic, so they change. But over here on the right-hand side, like, you know, where it says appetizer, breakfast, and all of that, and the search bar, you know, that information doesn't change. All that stays the same. It's static. It stays the same. But these pictures change. So when you hover your mouse over a food, it says pumpkin brownies. Oh, that sounds good. This says copycat crystal burger recipe. Looks good, sounds good. Cream cheese sausage balls, sounds good. Slow cooker Cajun cabbage. Crock pot turkey and gravy, 
stir fry teriyaki chicken and vegetables, garlic roasted potatoes, and chicken tinga tortillas. All right, so maybe you saw some things or heard some things there that you like. If you like some things, jot them down because <laughs> when you come back here and think, oh, I'll go back to that picture and I'll click on that picture to get to it, that will not be the same when you come back. But if you have taken the time to just jot that down, you can come over here into the search bar and search for that name that you wrote down. So I just want you to know that once you click like on the cream cheese sausage balls, you're at cream cheese sausage balls. And then let's just say, okay, I want to go back and I want to, I want to look at those pumpkin brownies. Oh, they're gone. Okay. You see that they're gone. So you need to have written down pumpkin brownies so that you can then search for pumpkin brownies over here. But now you've got new pictures to look at. So these are, these are constantly changing every time you come back to the page. And I just like people to know that. Anything that you heart is going to show up right here in my favorites in the top right hand corner. You'll notice that most of the pages that um, have access to information that you might want to reach again, like the food library, the recipe library, the video library, the um, wow challenges, they all have a place where you can heart things. And there's a lot of data in this uh, website, but if you heart the things, it brings it into a smaller, more manageable um, uh, recipe book or food library for you. That's why you do that. So if you are looking for a specific recipe and you know the name of that recipe, then you can type it right there. Okay, there's a search bar. Well, let's say that you want to find a recipe that is, uh, I'm going to click filters. I'm clicking filters. Now, before, when I'm in the food library, I never click filters first when I'm in the food library. I always go to the category and then I use the filters. But in the recipe library, I like to look at it in different ways because the filters don't really show up at the top of the other recipes. It shows up here though. So if I wanted to find, if I wanted to find things cooking for one to two people, cooking for family, crock pot, recipes with few ingredients and no bake recipes, then I can click here and it would filter things out. Let's say that I want to do cooking for the family. Click there. So now you can see that that filter is green. That means it's chosen. And I was not a happy clicker. Remember, we don't happy click. We just let it do its job, okay? It's a lot of data to pull. So it's pulled up a list. Well, let's say that you really want the recipes that are at least negative number. So I'm gonna slide my little weight loss meter down and create that range of negative three, negative one. And I'm gonna hit set and I'm gonna let it regenerate. Okay, so now all it has in there is negative one, two, and three in there. Now let's just say I want to see these in order. I'm going to click right inside this field or this cell, clicking right there, and it's going to list my foods in order. Look, there's all the negative threes. There's a lot of negative threes. That is awesome. And then look, there's 17 pages of recipes for the cooking for the family, 17 pages. And so maybe you come over here and actually count of likes that won't, it won't organize it by that. But maybe you then you go like, that's a lot. That's a lot. Maybe I want to find cooking for the family with um, ground beef. I'm, I'm just seeing if this works. Okay. I just pulled up two. See, I just searched right in there for ground beef and there comes up ground beef and cabbage and there comes up meatloaf. Oh, let me click on the meatloaf. I like meatloaf. Nobody can beat our Villa Mullins's beat meatloaf in Pell City, Alabama though. Okay. So we got meatloaf here and let's read it. Um, a pound and a half of extra lean, 96% ground beef, one packet of onion soup mix, a half a cup of low sugar ketchup, half a cup of water, two thirds cup breadcrumbs made from category two bread and three tablespoons of egg whites. There's your directions. Uh, there's your description. Um, a girl named Amanda McFarland put this in there. This is actually a category one and a condiment. 
So what that means is, is you could also add a two to this. And you know, sometimes a little mashed potatoes always taste good to me with meatloaf. You could do a shibboleth approved mashed potato and get a quarter cup of that with this. Maybe have some green beans. That would look and taste exactly like just a home cooking, wouldn't it? So let's say that you want to you want to um, make this and you want to get the ingredients for it right here. Add to grocery list. We're going to add this to the Ingalls grocery list. Everything that you need is going to be added in that. And since I think that sounds really good and actually very, very easy to make, and I don't currently have it hearted, I'm going to heart it because I want to be able to find it again. All right, so let's head back over here and I'm going to go back one more page and I just used my back button to go back because I wanted to get back to here. Let's say that this time I want to find things with chicken in the name. It did not find anything with chicken in the name. That was odd. So, and sometimes, never mind, it was finding it. So there's all the things with chicken in the name. Lots of things with chicken. Shortened our list from 17 pages to six. So do you see how it's doing those little things if you know if you're wanting to cook a certain thing, you can kind of search for that. Um, and there's all kinds of stuff. So let's look at this Cajun chicken. If you want to make this Cajun chicken, you click right there, come down here and you look. Okay, so it's two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast, some plastic wrap, one tablespoon of zero drag, 100% MCT oil, and one tablespoon Cajun seasoning. You know what this is? This is just seasoning some chicken. But sometimes I need that simple. I'm not a chef and I need this very, very simple stuff. This is a category one plus MCT, which you can eat alone, but you can also add a category two to this or a category two and three with this. You can add all of those. Let's say that you want to make this. You just click it and add it to the grocery list and go from there. No oh, sorry. So let me go just back to the, the uh, main page of the recipe library. See how the pictures changed again? Ooh, ooh, I'm gonna click here. Perfect cornbread. So this perfect cornbread, it's a negative one on the weight loss meter and it calls for almond flour, zero drag MCT oil, two whole eggs, baking powder and uh, sea salt. So you make it, your serving size is one slice. So this is a category two and four. So you could actually eat it by itself, but you could also put it with a category one. Um, and you could probably add a uh, category two vegetable with it. Yeah, saying that right there. But look right here. Careful <laughs> with what they write on the portion and the combo. One slice of cornbread could actually be a snack. So that's kind of a fun little thing right there. And I, ooh, ooh, you could actually watch a video on them making it too, which is fun. I love little videos through there. And then we can come down here and read all of that. There's a lot of opinions right there on that cornbread. So before you choose to make this cornbread, you may want to read all of those because it does make a difference in things that you might do that could make it really uh, better the first time you make it. So I've got that hearted there. 386 other people have said that they got it hearted too. That's really nice. Now, remember, if you're in here, you can print, see how I hit print? You can print these three hole punch them and put them in a binder. Okay, let's say we wanna add this to our grocery list. Okay, so here we are. See, I came back here and it changed the pictures again. Okay, so let's continue looking at the way that this page is laid out. If you're looking at this on your phone, you're gonna see it right here on the right-hand side. That's what it's gonna look like on your phone. Now, on your um, anytime you buy a cookbook, a cookbook is typically broken up into sections, you know, appetizers, breakfast, side dishes, main dishes, desserts, and so forth. Same thing with this in the Shibboleth, basically digital cookbook. So we've got appetizers, breakfast, and so forth. And if you're looking for a very specific type, you can just click on one of these things. I know a lot of people like this one right here. 
the Walmart. 99% of the ingredients come from Walmart. That way you go to one store, you find everything that you need. So this is a very, very popular um, uh, cat, uh, section, but can, can, can keep in mind that that doesn't just include breakfast, doesn't just include um, side dishes and so forth. It'd be um, everything pretty much. But also when you're looking at this on a computer like we are right now or how I'm showing it, you get, see there's appetizer listed there, but just the every item that's listed in appetizer is just listed out for you to see. And you can keep scrolling down and you'll eventually get to breakfast, okay, and so forth. But um, what, y'all tell me a section that you want to pop over to. And while I'm waiting for y'all to put in a section that you want us to check some things out, this was entered. There was a new recipe here called Brenda's Grilled Brussels Sprouts on September 3rd. Brenda's Sweet and Sour Barbecue Chicken was entered on September 3rd. So Brenda was uh, very busy, wasn't she? And what happens is when somebody puts in foods, they have added the a new recipe right there, how they think it'll be Shibboleth approved. And then um, Kim will look at it. Now they've probably had some conversation over on the Shibboleth Fixed It group, because that's the group that Kim monitors all about um, foods and um, that have, need to be approved and other recipes and stuff. But once y'all kind of get it down, you actually add the recipe from right there. But over this, here's a tip, over in the food library, it says add new food don't just add that through the shibboleth fixed it group okay because there's a backup of foods in there that'll never i don't know unless they cleared it out it, it would not get to yours so just do it in the shibboleth fixed it group but this is where you add new recipes okay but if you come down here all the new stuff is going to be listed and if you're a person that comes to the recipe library frequently and you want to see what's been added that's a great section for you okay so i'll y'all want me to look at salad dressings and breakfast okay so let's look at salads salad dressings you know what i'm going to do i'm going to type in salad dressings because there is not a specific I mean, there's soups and salads, but I'm going to type in salad dressing because I'm trying to specifically pull up salad dressing. I'm going to give it a second to generate. Okay, so we got all of those things right there. And as I'm scanning down, okay, I've got all zeros or negatives. That's good. And we've got apple, blueberry, broccoli salad with poppy seed dressing. Okay, so that's a salad with some dressing. Here's a dill pickle salad dressing, avocado pickle salad dressing. I've heard, I, I, I wouldn't eat that myself just because I don't like pickles or really avocados too much. I like guacamole, but, um, but I probably wouldn't pick to make that, but I have heard people like it a lot. So if you like those things, I would heart that one because I heard a pair of very good things about it. Um, this one right down here, this MCT salad dressing, a lot of people make it. Um, we got, there's a kale salad with warm bacon dressing. So there's all kinds of dressings listed out right here that you could make. There's a Olive Garden salad dressing, copycat, and so forth. So let's just click on this Olive Garden salad dressing. Come down here and you're going to use a packet of Italian salad dressing mix, a teaspoon of fat-free mayo, one teaspoon freshly grated Parmesan cheese, a half a teaspoon dried Italian seasoning, um, garlic powder, salt, sugar-free honey, Bragg's apple cider vinegar, black pepper, zero drag MCT oil, and some water. And then you just follow the directions and the serving notes are, you can have two tablespoons as your meal condiment, best if chilled overnight, but if you just can't wait, it still tastes amazing without being chilled. This recipe will keep seven to 10 days in your refrigerator. And there's some comments about that there. So if you wanna make that, then you can just add that to your grocery list. Okay, now let's have a look at breakfast. Breakfast, all right. We got all kinds of stuff over here for breakfast. Let's look at this Canadian bacon strata. Okay, so it's found in the breakfast 
section. It's found in the main dish section. It's found in the Walmart. 99% of the ingredients come from Walmart. So you've got egg beaters, ground pepper, dry mustard, kosher salt, carb master milk, um, Canadian bacon, English muffins, and some fat-free shredded cheese. There's your directions. Look how simple those look, actually. Um, it might be more involved than, than two, but it looks pretty easy. It's a category one and two. The recipe makes six servings. And then there's some comments down below. And if you want to add that to your grocery list, you can add that to your grocery list. Okay, so I see your question, Jan. And we'll look that up in just a second and see if we can find sugar-free honey should really just be found at a grocery store. But what we'll do is we're gonna come over here and look for something else. Maybe you want to make some blueberry carb quick muffins. Okay, that looks really tasty. And you would just read the ingredients and then you see your directions, the descriptions, and the serving notes. This is a category one, two, and five. So that's a proper combination all by itself. And two to three muffins is the serving. I'd probably stick with two. And if you want to make, add that to your grocery list, you just add that right there to your grocery list. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to go back to the main page where I can get to the food library because I want to show y'all a different way to look up recipes. Because let's say that in your freezer, you have got some ground turkey. Now, obviously, anything that you can use beef for, you could use, um, you could use ground turkey. But I mean, I'm going to put in ground turkey just because I'm trying to change things up a little bit tonight. So I typed in ground turkey and there we go. 96% lean or better ground turkey. I'm going to click there. The reason I want you to see it done in this way is because sometimes you've got some product at home that you want to use up and you want to kind of see what could I do with that and use it up. Well, I could go to the item in the food library and if there's any ideas down below with recipes, they'll be listed right there. Look at all of these recipes that include uh, that kind of turkey. There's two pages of those. And pretty much you could also just do the other turkey and you'll probably do ground beef um, and look them all up. But let's just say we wanna look at the ground turkey uh, enchilada stir fry. So you can have a look at that. You've got uh, ground turkey, MCT oil, chopped butternut squash, broccoli, black beans, enchilada sauce, salsa, and salt and pepper. Got your directions there. This is a one, which is a lean protein, a superfood, which is your six, and your two, which is your fibrous carb and a condiment. And then recipe makes four servings. Um, that was uh, introduced by, I don't know if y'all know Julie Marandino, but this is Tracy Atha is her sister. So that's fun. I love that they show us who the recipes were submitted by. Then we can just call Tracy and say, hey, it didn't come out like I was expecting. What did I do wrong? <laughs> um, so if you want to make that, you can click it and add it to there. So that was a, that just wanted you to show you that when you're looking up food items in the food library, if you'll scroll down just a little bit, you'll also see all of the recipes that are connected to that item, which is so fun. Um, and before we hop off of this, I'm gonna go into the food, well, I'm in the food library. I'm gonna look up sugar-free honey and see if it tells us, I want you to see this, Jan. Okay, so sugar-free honey. I'm gonna look up honey. See, sometimes you just eliminate things, okay? So it's pulling up. Oh, I'm in the recipe library and I don't wanna be in the recipe library. I wanna be in the food library. The reason that didn't pull up anything is I was, I was in the um, recipe library and then I just wanna look it up in the food library. Deb says that she found it at Walmart. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you can find it at most um, grocery stores, but there's a Walmart, Jan. But let's look it up, I wanna see.
Now you can see that the word honey is in a lot of things. So there's a lot of options there, but I am specifically scrolling down. I'm looking to see if I can find, seeing if it says sugar-free. If not, I'll look it up in a different way. Now there's honey, but it says as an allergy supplement only because honey brings an insulin release and we're trying to control insulin, right? Yeah, so there's not a lot of listings in here for it, but you can just look for it at a grocery store. Now, I do want to click here. I'm going to see if it shows. I'm just clicking on this G. Hughes sugar-free dipping sauce, honey mustard flavor. I'm going to scroll down. See right here, somebody said that can be purchased at Publix. That's why I was looking around like that. Oh, I passed it, Sherry. Okay, she said I passed it. But um, you can uh, see right there what stores people have said. Now, remember, this is member entered data. Shibboleth isn't going around looking at all the foods and all these rest all these grocery stores. This is member entered data. It is in the hemp bar thingy. Um, So while we're kind of talking about recipes, I want to go over into the video library and I want y'all to see this really cool feature of the video library. I'm in the silver level. If I come over here, do you see where it says we fixed it? You're welcome, Jan. Oh, it's called imitation, it's called imitation. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you, Deb. It's called imitation, honey. Gotcha. I never bought it, y'all can tell. Thank y'all for helping me out. So in this fixed it videos, you can watch videos of how to make these certain things. And I think it's kind of fun. Have y'all ever get hooked on watching how to make things? Why not get hooked on how to make things that are Shibboleth approved? Ooh, look, we fixed it cream corn. My husband would be so pleased if I made that. He loves corn. I don't like it. But look, there I am making French toast. <laughs> So if you want to watch people make some things, you can. Some of them are like this, where you can see a person's kitchen, and some of them are more like an overview of, you know, just watching it happen. Like this one right here, you would just be looking at an overview of watching it happen. So y'all check these out. This is kind of fun. Really, really, really kind of fun. And look, there's yum yum sauce if you like yum yum. This s'mores bread pudding, by the way, is delicious. Absolutely delicious. Okay. So let's go back over to Fast Track. And now that you have, we familiarized the way that the recipe library looks, we can check that box. We added recipes to the grocery list. So we're going to check that box. So the last thing that we're going to do today is check out our created grocery lists. Each grocery list can be customized before going shopping. When a full recipe is added to the grocery list, it adds every item needed. You may already have some staples at home. When you look at your grocery list, you can edit the items you do not need to purchase at the store. Notice how easy each item in the grocery list is listed. I mean, notice how each item in the grocery list is listed by category. Isn't that amazing? See, to me, there's layer after layer after layer of education in this website. In fact, I want to go back to a recipe real quick and show you something. Okay, let's just randomly cook on something, click on something. Breakfast skillet. Okay, when you look at this, do you see two cups diced potatoes? 
When you keep reading to the right, it says potatoes, category three energy carb. We leave nothing to chance. We don't let you just wonder about what potatoes are. We know that you are new and you are learning all of this information about food because you have decided this is important to you and you want to know. So we don't just have two cups of lean ground turkey, one red bell pepper. We don't, we don't, we don't leave it at that. We add that turkey breast is a category one lean protein, that bell peppers are a category two fibrous carb, could be called a freebie and they're gluten-free. So any, any way that we can, we help you with continuing to try to educate and not leave things to chance and you sitting there having to wonder what onion is again, you know? So I love that. So we're gonna click on the grocery list. Now the grocery list is going to pop you back over into this green button. Uh, so when you're not in fast track, you're going to access your grocery list from this green button. But do you see right here? Here's the ingles that I was just creating this list. So I'm going to click there and look everything that we put into these grocery lists is there. And it all put it into its own category which I think is pretty cool. So let's have a look and let's just scan down some of those things. Okay, I probably need all those lean proteins. Um, let's just look at those fibers, carbs. You know what? I have carb quick at home. So let's just say I don't need to purchase that this time at the grocery store. I can click that negative red minus button and I can remove it from the list. Okay. Um, let's say that I already have some Quaker, I oh, know I added that. Let's say that we've got super fine almond flour at home. We can remove that. The only reason I haven't removed those, okay, it wouldn't let me remove it, so it's going to stay there. A little glitch. But the reason I was going to remove those is sometimes when you buy that type of stuff, you don't just use it up with one time, and sometimes it's the staple, it sits there, ready to be used the next time. Okay, I need all of that. Let's see, I need that, I need that. Let's come over here to look at condiments. Let's say I've got butter buds sprinkles at home already and take that off. And let's just say I've got Splenda at home. I can remove that. I always look and make sure that water is on my list. And if water is not on my list, Look at this. I love how it added plastic wrap too, because one of those uh, recipes specifically said plastic wrap. <laughs> so if I already had, look, this one says salt, sea salt, and salt and pepper and pepper. See, I'd probably just go remove the salt. I would probably remove pepper. And then I would remove sea salt. And then I would just get salt and pepper. There it is, salt and pepper. I'd get salt and pepper. See how things were listed in multiple ways in the recipes. That one says ground black pepper. I'm just going to remove that. That way, that way, I don't know if you're like me, but I like fewer things on my grocery list. And then I like to see them leave my grocery list. So now I've narrowed that down to Cajun seasoning, garlic powder, and salt and pepper. And the reason that so many popped in is because when people write those recipes and put them into the recipe library, they're pulling information from the food library. And sometimes they've just pulled different listings and that's why they ended up like that. Okay, so, so basically at this point, I want you to see a couple of things. You can print this. And you can just take it to the grocery store and check, check, check. At this point, I want to show you that if you remembered that you need to add something to the grocery list, if you click right there where it says add grocery items, it's going to take you to the food library. You're going to search for the food that you want to add and you're going to add it. So let's just add, let's add some almonds. So I'm, I'm just going to click right there, add it to my list.
We should see almonds listed in superfoods. There we go. So if you need to customize this in any way, you can certainly customize that. Now I'm gonna show you on my phone the way that I do it though. So once I've created a grocery list, I go into, I have a shortcut. I created a shortcut on my phone that links directly to the grocery lists uh, page. So when I go here, I'm gonna click on that tab and you'll see it's gonna bring up something. Look, my grocery lists. So now I'm going to click on Ingles and it's going to bring up, this is the list that we're currently looking at. So when I go into the grocery store now and I put fat-free shredded Kraft cheese in my cart, I'm going to hit that button and it's going to ask me if I want to remove it and I'm going to remove it. My list gets smaller and smaller and smaller while I'm in the grocery store. And I don't know if you're like me, but I like this stuff to be eliminated so I don't even have it distracting me. So you can just go through and check off all the things. And that's, that's the way I do it. So I don't actually print it. I just go to it on my phone and leave it open on my phone and, and shop like that. So do y'all have any questions for me tonight? If y'all don't have any questions, if you'll notice what I did, I clicked on this bell notification. I, I click clean my bell notifications out every day because I want to see if I've gotten a friend request or anything like that, this is where it's going to show up. And look, it says based on my weekly weigh in history, I could be on pace to gain 13.1 pounds over the next five weeks, um, which is fine with me. Three days ago, that thing told me I was on pace to gain 30 pounds over five weeks. Yesterday, it said I was on pace to gain 17 pounds over five weeks. And now I'm down to 13 pounds. But the re what that is, is that's reminding me, hey, girl, if you kept doing those holidays you were doing, this is what could happen. And I don't know about you, but I like those reminders. I want to be reminded because I don't want to go back. And so I, I always come in there and look at those things. But when I've looked at them, I check them off. And then sometimes you get little email messages through the system too. Um, yeah, Sherry, I heard him say last night that that meeting was going to be on Monday at 830. And I think that the message that came out and the Zoom registration is showing Tuesdays at 830. So let's go with the Tuesdays. And they, I asked somebody about it today and they said, yeah, we heard him say at Monday at 832, but it looks like it's Tuesday at 830. Yeah. And he's saying that if he has at least 10 people come into the meeting, he will continue having the meetings. But once interest wanes, he's done because, you know, it'll wear you out just doing it all the time. And then you let it go for a second and then you pick it back up. So guess what I would suggest we all do? Get on that meeting. Get on the meeting. Let's get on there. All right. Well, I hope y'all had a great and wonderful time tonight looking at that special feature of the website. If you do not have a Shibboleth membership, please know that you can still get one. Go to ShibbolethDeals.com. And I don't know what price is today. Y'all go check it out. <laughs> I don't know. Um, we were running a special and I don't know if it's gone away yet or not. Sometimes the developer takes a second to put that detail in there. And that special runs for a day or two longer than we thought it was going to. So check it out at ShibbolethDeals.com and you can get a membership. Why, why do you need a membership? It's going to give you the initial education that you've always needed but did not have about nutrition. It's going to be more valuable to you than a college course on nutrition. I'm going to guarantee that. It is more valuable than what you'll learn in the college course on, on nutrition. And we're going to give you all the tools and resources that you need to. Y'all have been watching the uh, food library last night, the recipe library tonight. Tomorrow night, we are going over void replacements, freebies, extras, snacks, and meal replacements. On Friday night, we're going to go over the video library, the restaurant guide, and wow challenges. And then we'll wrap up on Saturday night. But that's what it gets you. It gets you all of this. Plus, plus, 
webinars by Travis and meetings by Travis that really don't cost you anything extra unless it's something special outside of what the regular membership is. We do have some special offerings. You know, you can't just spend one-on-one -on -one time with Travis without paying for it. I mean, he is 20 years into um, this helping people lose weight. And if you want one-on-one -on -one time, you just got to pay for it. Or you can get a membership and you can get fast track from me. You can get challenges with Jason. Now, Jason, he charges 10 bucks for those challenges, but he does a lot of work into those and, that, and it, it's, they're beneficial. Um, and then Julie's doing a class on Mondays at noon now. Dr. Jim does several classes a week. So all those classes are included in your membership and you get free mentor appointments. So y'all bring a Bring a member, bring a, fun, a friend along with you on this journey with you. It's much more fun to hang out with a friend and y'all talk the same language about it. So you can get your membership at shibolithdeals.com. And if you had a person tell you about Shibolith, please write in their first and last name. Um, we like to thank our members for sharing Shibolith and we give them 5% back to spend in the Shibolith store online or in person in Kennesaw. So we just want to make sure that we can thank our members for sharing. All right, well, we're going to hop off. I hope that y'all have had a great night. I'll see you back here tomorrow night at 730 or on the morning show called The Shibby Show. And it's just a morning show for focus, daily devotion, and morning motivation. So tomorrow morning about 730, 740-ish. Probably about 730 in the morning. I got to be somewhere 830. So um, I'll see you there. Y'all have a great night. You're welcome, Jane. Glad you're here with us. It is wonderful. You're going to love it. The thing I can say to y'all um, is stick around. Part of the benefit of Shibboleth is the community. So stay connected, get to know us, comment. We'll be calling you by name like you're our best friend soon, okay? So just comment and talk and have fun. You're welcome, Jeannie. Glad you were here. All right. I'll see y'all later.